Welcome to Bible 325, the life, mission, and teaching of Jesus Christ. I am your professor, Reverend Shannon Cockrell, and I am so excited that you joined us here at Austin Bible Institute, uh, where we are training you to make a difference in the world, to go out and reach souls for Jesus Christ. Uh, this video, uh, we're going to look at the anointing of Jesus in Bethany. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video and get those notes entitled The Anointing in Bethany. And we're going to look at this event, this memorial that uh, John and the Gospel writers memorialize Christ. <clears throat> this event in his story uh, so if you want to go ahead and get your Bible we're going to look at um, John chapter 12 especially but this story is also found in Mark chapter 14 and so here uh, let's just read the passage John 12 starting at verse 1 six days before the Passover take note of that John is very good at giving us dates and when things happen. So, so highlight that time marker. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. Bethany means house of figs. House of figs. Where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. In the previous chapter, we saw that event. Uh, here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet, underline that, on Jesus' feet, and wiped his feet with her hair underline that and the house was filled with the fragrance of her of the perfume but one of his disciples Judas Iscariot who was later to betray him underline that objected why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor it's worth a year's wage he did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me underline that very important that is foreshadowing meanwhile a large crowd of the Jews found out that Jesus was there they came uh, not only because of Jesus but because of Lazarus whom he had raised from the dead so the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well for on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. So John, only John, only John gives this explicit statement of when this event happened. Six days before the Passover. Now the Passover, uh, Jewish, uh, was a great one of the three big, 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 big festivals that the Jews celebrated. Uh, you had Passover, Unleavened Bread, and then the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, you can read about that in Exodus 12, Leviticus 23. Now, this happened on the 14th day of Nisan. Nisan corresponds with our... Uh, March and April 
So this is the sun, the Saturday before what we call Palm Sunday. So this is the Saturday before Palm Sunday, as we'll see later in uh, John 12. So Matthew and Mark relocate this story. They put it topically because of the symbolism uh, that Jesus prepared for his body, his burial, sandwiching the narrative between a reference to the later plot of the Jews to arrest Jesus and then Judas's arrangement to betray him. <clears throat> now it's important uh, because it says it's a, uh, a year's wage. This was about 300 denarii. A denarii was the year's wage. So this was not some cheap uh, everyday drugstore perfume that you can get. This was expensive. She was saving her money. A year's wage. She took it and she broke it and used it to anoint the feet of Jesus. Usually uh, the anointing was upon the head, but this woman poured it out upon his feet. Mary is lavishing, lavishing her affection on Jesus by pouring over him a jar of perfume worth about a year's wage. Think about what you make or if you have a job, think about what you make in a year. Saving that up, not spending a dime for an entire year to buy a thing of perfume only to take it and break it upon somebody's feet. Worship is expensive. True worship comes from an expensive place. Think about that. Uh, Judas thinks this is waste, but it's not. There are times when there is just uh, unrepeatable, a costly, one-of-a-kind act of devotion to Jesus. Because he is so worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our gratitude. He's worthy of our devotion and worship. Think about where you would be if Jesus did not save you. This event is also foreshadowing. John's use is just foreshadowing the imminent arrest, trial, crucifixion, and burial of Jesus. Is foreshadowing. <clears throat> also, Jesus' death was not an accident, but was fully willed and anticipated by Jesus. If you look at John 10, 17 through 18, he lays down his life. Literally, it's like the word, take off your clothes and put it to the side. No one took his life. The Jews didn't kill him. The Romans didn't kill him. The, the soldiers didn't kill him. He laid down his life willingly for you and for me. That's personal. That's salvation. And now John is setting the stage for betrayal. Because we're going to see next that after this, the triumphal entry, Jesus coming in as king, and they're crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the God, blessed be the name of the Lord. It's interesting that these same people who were crying Hosanna here were later crying, crucify him. Make sure your worship isn't fickle. Make sure your worship is real. Worship is costly. So here's this woman taking a year's worth of wages, buying perfume only to break it 
upon his feet. So I ask you, uh, briefly, what are you willing to break and lay at the feet of Jesus? When's the last time you just sat in awesome wonder of the Savior? When's the last time you turned off the TV, the iPads, the iPhones, and it was just you and Jesus? You let him minister to you, but you're also ministering to him. You're pouring out of your alabaster box. Another thing is don't let people mock you. Don't feel afraid for what's in your alabaster box. But because people don't know the cost of the oil in your alabaster box. So we're seeing now the conflict that is now coming to an absolute head after this event. Jesus goes to Lazarus's house. He's at Mary's house, Martha's house. And these people are now coming not only to see Jesus, but to see Lazarus, a living miracle. And so now the Pharisees have had it. They see their power on the people. Their grip is starting to loosen. So now they have to do something. Now we're at a critical moment where they have to decide. They're going to kill Jesus. And they're going to kill Lazarus. But I want to show you something here. Uh, in John 12. Verse 24. Jesus is predicting his death. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains but only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So Jesus says, I have to die like a kernel. I have to be planted so that there can be increase. Look at verse 32. <clears throat> and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, crucifixion, I will draw all kinds of people to myself. Look at that. Look at that. Jesus says the crucifixion is necessary for me to get the harvest, to start to draw people the Son of Man must be lifted up. <clears throat> but now we're coming to a close of the book of signs in, uh, jo in John's Gospel. The first 12 chapters deal with the signs that he's laying out. That Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the King. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the suffering servant. John is laying out systematically these signs but look at verse 37 37 if you can see that underline it highlight it powerful verse in John even after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence they still would not believe in him what will it take for you to believe in God? These people saw miracle after miracle after miracle. Lazarus is sitting right there, but still some refuse to put their faith in Jesus. Don't let that be you. You want to be that good soil. You want to be the cultivated soil. You want to be the one who is not ashamed to lay out his alabaster box. Wash Jesus' feet. Wash each other's feet. But most importantly, pray and thank God that you have been washed with the word of regeneration. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
So now we can get in this book, pull out truths, and then minister them. Minister them to other people. So, I ask you again, what is the cost of the oil in your alabaster box? Think about that this week. And as you go back over and study John chapter 12 and Mark 14, I want you to remember that this event is foreshadowing the greatest event in human history. The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Resurrection just simply means anastasis to stand again because Jesus stood from death. You have the right to stand again. God bless you.